Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. And somebody posted this picture of a clock that's pretty cool. And somebody asked me how you could make that pattern. Well, I don't know exactly. I want to make it a little bit different. I'm going to take an oval and I'm going to just kind of make it an oval without holding down the control button. I'm going to go up to object and I'm going to convert it to a curve so I have nodes. I'm going to take that and move this to a point. I'm gonna right click and turn it into a cusp so it only moves one deal at a time. I'm gonna expand these, or I'm gonna take those away. Now, this thing probably not equal, but that doesn't really matter right now. Because what we can do is hit the plus key on the keyboard and mirror it, and you can see it's a little bit off. But then we can take the Smart Fill tool and fill that in, and then that's gonna, whoop, uh, take a, and make it symmetrical in every is good enough anyway for the video and so now we got this shape we can left click right click and I'm going to go ahead and make this a I'll change my, I'll change my points to inches because I want that line to be a quarter of an inch thick or um, if you cut this out you you wouldn't probably have to have a quarter of an inch, but it this will work for this video. Now I'm going to control D and make a duplicate and I'm going to move the center row. Try that again. Control D and duplicate, double click on your rotation and move it to that center. I'm going to rotate it seven degrees and then I'm going to control D. There's two, three, four. Now I'm going to take this one, control D change our rotation to that same center spot. But at this time, I'm going to rotate it to negative seven degrees. One, two, three. Okay, whatever you get like that, you can erase that zero, minus seven. Whoop, didn't have a duplicate. Let's move it back. Control D, take that same measurement, minus seven. What's going on? Control D. Maybe I wasn't doing it correctly. Minus seven. Control D again. There we go. So we've got four on either side. I'm going to take the center one and make it red just so we can kind of see it. And for a, just a second, I'm going to change it back to a hairline because I think it's a little easier to erase what we do not do not need in a hairline mode. So I'm going to take the virtual segment delete key. I'm going to delete everything on this side of that red line. And as long as you don't touch the red line, you're good to go. And I'm going to get that, that, that. Whoop. See, I touched the red line. Do not touch the red line. Okay, we got that. Now, let's uh, zoom in here. And let's make that line, select it all, make sure you got it all selected. Go up to here and make it that quarter inch. Okay, say okay. Now go to, let's select it all again and go to object and convert the outline to an object. Then I'm gonna right click, no fill, left click, outline. Now we can weld this, and you've already got start of a design. Pretty cool. Maybe not as cool as his or theirs. Now let's put this in the center of the page. Now he has, or they, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight items. If I was gonna do it for myself, I'd make it 12, then that way the hour hand would be on each one, but I'm gonna do the 12. So get out a calculator and um, 360 divided by eight is 45 degrees. I should have known that. So we're gonna bring in indexing lines and hit P, bring in indexing lines and hit P. And I'm gonna move this thing up. And we're gonna see how it looks after we control D and make a duplicate, move the center of the rotation of the 
there and just always double check it to make sure it's there. And whenever you get that, it's because you're not right on the X. Now let's rotate it that 45 degrees. Ah, we're too close to, we're too down too far. So let's take the duplicate. Let's move this thing down, holding down the control button. Because we want them to, to uh, mesh together. Control D, move the center rotation to there. Doesn't look like it is. Click off of it, click back, it's not. Let's actually zoom in here. And sometimes it's better to come off and go back. There again, if you don't hit that X right there, it goes in the shape tool. I'm having a little trouble getting it to stick on that center. It can actually, there it is. So now let's rotate it that 45 degrees. That'll work. I still could put them a little bit further apart or closer together, but it's gonna work. <sighs> My old laptop does that sometimes. And I don't know. And it also happens. So if that ever happens, just start over or not start over, just delete these. Check your center rotation. Take away the zero plus 45. I didn't have a duplicate, so back up. Control D and make a duplicate. Plus 45. Control D, Control D, Control D. Now all you have to do is take all these and weld them together. And then you could kind of look at it. <clears throat> and if you had 12 of these, this would be perfect. So what I'm going to do now is it just go with this one. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to go up. I'm going to break the curve apart. And I'm going to take out this center stuff. Whoop. I'm going to go to object again. Tell you what, let's select it all again. Go to object. Nope. I just must have just hit something. Let's see if we can't grab that. There we go. Grab that. Grab that. And you could, I could, oh. Uh, you could do this, whoop, do this with the Alt key in the freehand tool, hold down the Alt key and go through here and, and grab all this and then hit delete. So now take your smart fill tool, fill that in and that didn't work. Oh, I took away the outline. I accidentally took away the outline. So let's just, Tell you what, let's go back to the pick tool, just the normal pick tool, and just pick these parts. Because we have to have that outline to contain the smart field to, to make it all one piece of wood. And then take the smart field tool. We'll tell you what, we'll make it black this time. And there's your clock. It's pretty cool. I actually think it would look better if it was, uh, 12 instead of eight, but that's just personal preference. And then all you'd have to do is figure out your clock movement and hit P. That's why I like drawing the center of the page. And then that way, when you use the smart fill tool, it'll fill that in and you'll actually have a hole, but you'd need to measure that for your clock movement. And the other things, maybe these little bitty dots probably need to be removed. Um, Probably have to go to object. There we go. And this type of stuff, sometimes the pick tool works, but sometimes the shape tool actually works better. You can actually see the, the nodes and just delete them. Because those pieces are so minute that they're gonna just create a hole so the pick tool works and just hit delete. And if you see, they're not on every one, so I'm a little bit off on something. But just delete all those little bitty notes. And if you ever grab, so we're grabbing the inside or the outside. Let's say this thing's 20 inches big, which is really too big. Let's make our nudge factors 20 and grab that and just nudge it out of the way. Now it won't cause us any problems anymore. And we can grab them all those and delete them. Grab all those and delete them. 
As long as we don't touch one of those other parts, we're good. My screen's so dirty, I can't tell if it's a part or a part. That's one way to do it. Uh, I actually like his better. He's got more of a intermittent further down. Uh, mine's different, but this would really be cool if you did it in, with 12 segments. You know, that way you'd have more and there's plenty of room to do that. And, and then each part like that, well, it's not going to be that big if you use 12, but you'll still have 12 outer parts that would be for the times of the day of the clock. I hope that helped a little bit, and thank you for watching.